supply chains over a period of time they organize and reorganize themselves the reason why they do this reorganizing is to move towards the most efficient way of organizing themselves one of the key drivers is the cost part however this is not the only major factor in forcing supply chains to constantly look for better ways of organizing themselves one very important factor in getting a supply chain together to perform effectively is the risk or the reliability whenever an industry or a company organizes its supply chain it will always look for reducing the risks from the supply side while trying to remove the risks on the supply side it will also try to organize the supply chain in a way which is also going to reduce the cost these two are primarily the drivers for supply chains to organize themselves this may lead to a fairly visible structure in how a supply chain deals with procuring raw material and processing of the raw material and making finished goods for sale the automobile supply chain has organized itself well and the most visible form of this supply chain is that it has structured it in the form of a pyramid now the reason why it looks like a pyramid is because at the top is an assembler and then at various levels you see the number of suppliers going up the reason the suppliers go up is because the components are getting aggregated at different tiers and hence in automobile supply chain we use a term called structured or tiered supply chain the structured supply chain in automobile industry is called the tiering of supply chain so on the top is the oem or original equipment manufacturer below that is tier 1 supplier below that is tier 2 supplier and below that is tier 3 supplier the reason why it looks like a pyramid is at every level the components are aggregated into something that means if tier 4 is a level where people are producing small components it could be nuts and bolts or small pipe or a molding or a casting or machining something all these big number of components get sort of aggregated into much smaller sub assemblies in tier 3 and the moment you come to tier 2 the sub assemblies get bigger they somewhat look like a system of a car however the full system of a car is developed by tier 1 now the tier 1 and oem are fairly close now the tier 1 and oem are fairly close the reason why they are close is a lot of tier 1 suppliers not only do the manufacturing assembling procurement and other activities they also sometimes have proprietary technology in making those car systems sub systems of a car steering is a sub system suspension is a system engine is a system fuel injection is a system braking is a system so tier 4 suppliers are the suppliers which are primarily making components or doing a small process could be electroplating 
or may just be doing rough cutting of the raw material. Then these are supplied to tier 3. Tier 3 suppliers may be doing a huge number of components. That means they start adding higher value to the final product. Then we come to tier 2 which makes a bit of sub assemblies which may not be very high in value but they have aggregated a lot of these components made by tier 3. The moment we come to tier 1, it is usually where the subsystems of the automobiles are assembled together with a bit of proprietary knowledge inside. And finally, these subsystems are translated or transported to the assembler where it gets assembled. The reason why it got structured like this is cost one. Second, it also reduces the risk. Now, while trying to reduce the risk, one of the driving factors is your source should be more than one. If there is a single source for one particular component and you have a disruption in supply, the whole supply chain will come to standstill. So for example, if somebody is making a specialty fastener, he is in tier 4. But if he is not able to produce or by some luck or fate, his supply or his manufacturing gets stopped, that one component can stop the assembly of all the automobile. So what do we do? So we, in trying to structure this, make sure that the person has or the source is always more than one. If you have to handle so many suppliers for one component, it is but natural to make sure that you delegate this responsibility to somebody who is using it. So for example, there is a tier 1 supplier, he is making braking systems. It is his responsibility to make sure that the tier 2 supplier is reliable. Not only that, after the supplier being reliable, you have to ensure that the supply is also reliable. That means he has to have a method of making sure that the supply is never disrupted. What is the option? Either he buys out his supplier or he has some sort of an arrangement where he can intervene in the working of the supplier. That means working of the tier 2 supplier or he can say let me have two suppliers. But when he decides to have two suppliers, the suppliers themselves have a threat that now they will be pushed in for low cost approach. As I said, there are two important factors which decide or drive the structuring of a supply chain. One is cost, one is reliability of supply. The moment you take two suppliers for the same component, there is understanding that my price will be driven down. This is exactly where the Japanese supply chain has its uniqueness or the automobile supply chain has its uniqueness. There will always be two sources, but to get the order for that component, both of these sources will present their manufacturing process as well as the cost structure to the buyer. And when this is done, usually the share of business is split. That means both of them get an order. 
but the share of business is decided on the cost or the price at which the supplier is willing to supply. So what the buyer gets is, it does get a differential pricing, but what he has done is he has developed two suppliers who are capable of supplying the same component with the same quality parameters as the buyer wants. But now, to get the cost down, okay, the share of business decides the cost impact of these two suppliers. So, the buyer, that means the tier one, tier one buyer assembler, has reduced his risk by having a, by having two tier two suppliers. But by having two tier suppliers, it is not negotiating to drive the price down. The tier one supplier is using these two to make its supply source reliable and then look at a way where the cost impact will not be full. That means no, the order will not go to the least cost supplier, the full order, because the moment we send the full order, what are we doing? We are actually making the supply chain more risky. However, there are certain more conditions put inside. Whenever a tier 2 supplier quotes to tier 1 supplier, they also have to present their full capacity installed for producing the quantities. So in first round, if the business got split, 30% goes to the supplier who is slightly more expensive and 70% goes to a supplier who is low cost, the quality being same, similar. Now both of them have will only get the order if they both show the installed capacity is equal to what the buyer intends to buy. So in cases where they want to shift 100% production to one supplier, there is a high chance. Usually it does not happen because somebody who has just got 30% of the business will use his capacity for doing some other work. So it is easier for the supplier who has got the 70% share of business to take over the 30% share of business from other supplier if he is not able to supply. Reliability in the supply chain is built like this and hence you see the automobile supply chain looks like a pyramid. But it looks like a pyramid. Why? Because the sub-assemblies providers are actually handling the suppliers themselves. If it didn't look like a pyramid or for example there was an OEM which actually dealt with all its suppliers and did the whole final assembly themselves, they may have the same cost of raw material, maybe a better cost. But what suffers is their ability to assemble the whole product with the least amount of inventory. Secondly, the cost of managing the operations from the management attention point of view is very high. Because if there is a component supplier who supplies just 2 lakhs of material, he will also be looked after by a purchasing manager who in a way would be looking after another supplier who is supplying 2 crores of raw material or semi-processed or components to the OEM. But more important than this is the huge amount of storage space required for the OEM to house all these components. So the moment you structure it, you are aggregating components, components, components and then what you are transporting to the OEM 
as tier 1 supplier is an assembled part. So, not only the suppliers, the labor content also gets structured. The movement of raw material, storage, etc., etc., gets structured. You can then move a lot of sub assemblies to a place where there is skill levels available for you to assemble. All these are the benefits of structuring it in a tier.